Good evening. I'm Rapstein with your Metal Market Wrap-Up, and this wrap-up is for Tuesday, the 13th of September, and the time about 4.40 p.m. So we'll open, and markets will do its thing tonight. We have the CPI numbers. They're running hot. You know, core CPIs went up double the estimate. Uh, it was supposed to go up three-tenths. It went up six-tenths, and you didn't drop enough. You went from 8.5 to 8.3 in the uh, headline CPI. So what's going on? Well, let me explain a few things. You're trying to find reasons on the CPI, and if you go into the whole table, you're going to find, I think, probably about 70% of the numbers that make it up actually went up 4% month over month. I was reading a study that did that already. But more important to me is, do you go through these reports? Now, let me explain something as a chartist that's important. You look at a chart, it's based on, hey, there's no surprises. This is what the pattern looks like. And if that's what the pattern looks like, where's the support, resistance zones, and so on. Let me give you the fallacy of that that I've learned over my 50 years of doing this. That's fine until a government report comes out. But you know when the government reports come out. So, barring a shock overnight could have been, uh, you know, a 9-11 event, some, something terrible like that. When you see a key government report coming out, you got to ask yourself, is it an important one? Is it just another one? How's it being rated by the marketplace? Well, the marketplace has been rating the CPI in a major report. It's the last big one before the FOMC meeting. As it turns out, it just solidifies that the Fed's going to go 75 basis points. And between now and that meeting, there'll be an argument, should the Fed go 100 basis points? What it's not going to be is a 50 basis point hike. And what's going to happen at that meeting is we're going to see the dot plot and get an idea what all this heated CPI means to the members right now. And what are they looking at going into next year. Let me tell you how I view that too. They said they're data dependent. That means I'll look at the dot plot and I don't want to know much more beyond December. I know that they're going to, some of them go forever and ever and ever raising it, but you've got to look at it that way. If they're data dependent, at some point, the higher interest rates that the Fed keeps putting out will grab traction and slow down the economy. There is a time lag between the Fed raising an interest rate and when it hits, it takes the impact in the economy. It's almost like an oil tanker. If you've seen these things, they're football fields, plural, long. Their width is unbelievable. You don't start slowing them down just as you're approaching land. You're slowing them down way, way out. And the idea is you're at your creep and crawl to get the thing docked without knocking the docks down and damaging everything. Well, that's what's happening with this. That's the analogy. To me, today was a big winning day. Why? Because I had no positions on. I didn't get caught. I'm not mentally caught. Coming off winners last week, knock on wood in some markets. They're not always weeks that are winners. And uh, in, in the futures markets, I'm pretty happy. So now I'm looking for entry points. So let's go to the charts. Is there anything here friendly in gold? Nope. Market's down uh, six-eighths of a percent, 6.68% 6 for the uh, week so far. We'll get to midweek tomorrow. Still staying well under the 18-week average inflation there, but the Fed, its enemy, not something that I think is positive there. Gold today down $23. You can see how the market came up and didn't fall apart. I respect that. This is the number you got to be careful about. Getting under right through here. And if you come back on the chart, that's the 1700 level. And if you get, say, into the 1690s, you could see another wave to the downside. When we tie that together, you see that the market is 1701.70 is the last break low. You can see how these lows have all come in at that general zone. The trend is up because the swing line still has a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. The resistance is right where I thought it would be. I teach and I told you I think that you always look at that line in the sand. I call the 18-day moving average, be it on a daily chart or a weekly chart, the line in the sand. It is often a number that if the market gets a rally, it pulls back, it might fight a battle there. On the way up, it's the resistance point. Now, once you clear it, 
You can go into trends and that just becomes the resistance on rallies. And even notice here, after this big rally, that is on that day where you stopped, then it decided to go higher. You had one day of hitting it yesterday, today's the second, and now the market to the downside. Okay, but is it a downtrend? It isn't. You still have the swing line up, the bias is down since you're under it, so you have nothing. When I take a look at the Bollinger Band, I'm gonna look for support, which is interesting as can be, coming in against that 1700 level at the 1700 zone, wherever that Bollinger Band comes in when the markets reopen tonight. When I look at momentum, you have gotten out of the way of being oversold. As long as both numbers are above 30, you're no longer in oversold territory. So markets often embed, and you know, we've talked about what that means. It means that the K and the D lines, the red and the blue, are going sideways under the 20 level. When you lose that, it is very typical for the market to make a run to the closest main moving average. And that main moving average in the case of this market was, I'm just gonna bring it to where it happened. That's, that's where it happened, right here. You got your settlement over 21. Should be making a move, the way I teach the charting, before these lows are taken out, it should make a run for the closest main moving average. Now remember, that moving average is gonna drop a little bit each day that goes by. So it's a question of how much time before it gets hit. Here's the market moving, and you can see that average. A day before was 55, 1740, 17.45.90, but it should still hit it. Boom, that's all that it owed. So now you're back to a neutral game. That's how I look at it. And as it turns out, the market opened steady last night and just collapsed today off the weight of it. Well, that's the advantage of understanding how to work with momentum and Bollinger Bands. Next, the gold-silver ratio. Still staying way down. This was a son of a gun. You came from 96 to 88. That's quite a play. And if the market can stay like this, it could be that the, the silver wants to gain on the gold market going forward. When we look at the silver market, I think it was a stellar performer today. Now, I know you're going to tell me, Ira, it was down 37 uh, cents, and I'm agreeing with you. But, 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 it is still hanging near that Bollinger Band, which is a resistance point. It's got room to break to the 18-day average, 70 cents from here, and still be in a pretty good picture. What bothers me as a chartist is I don't like buying overbought conditions or telling my clients to buy overbought. So you back away from things like that. In the copper market, I don't get what made this whole copper market go up, except I think that people bought into the idea that central bankers don't want to raise interest rates that much, that they as a group are counting that inflation on its own will tame itself down. And they saw today, at least in the biggest economy of the world, the United States, that is not the case. And I think that the copper, which at one point was 369, it had just come from being into the th mid 330s. It had gone up like that, gave it up in a heck of a range today. I mean, that is a 